So here we have our practical to investigate um, the electrostatic forces on charged rods. And our equipment is we've got uh, a cloth here for the polythene rods and a separate cloth here for the acetate rods. Uh, we've also got a watch glass here, which lets them rotate. So that's going to go in the middle there. Now, first thing I'm going to do is take this cloth and I'm going to take the polythene rod and I'm going to rub the end of the cloth, sorry, and rub the end of the rod with the cloth, uh, applying quite a lot of friction. And I'm going to place the rod at the end here, sorry, on the uh, watch glass, without letting the charged end here touch the table. And being on the watch glass there means it can rotate freely. So neither end is touching the table, um, but it's really important that this end doesn't touch the table. Um, as this is a non-conductor, I've charged this end, but I'm free to handle this end because as a non-conductor, the charge that I've built up over here isn't going to sort of move down to this end. So if this end touches the table or I touch it, it doesn't matter. Um, it is now important that I use a different rod for the acetate cloth. Um, so polythene charges negatively, which means charges have moved from the rod onto the cloth, making the cloth positively charged. So if I use this cloth to try and charge this rod, it won't work as well. So we need a new cloth, new rod. So take the acetate rod, exactly the same thing. Gonna apply friction to the end of it. Now this end of the rod, so I'm holding it here, this end of the rod is now positively charged. Again, I can hold this end because it's a non-conductor um, and it's only the surface where friction was applied where the charge is. So if I bring this near, we should get an attractive force. There we go. So you see the force of attraction with the acetate that I'm holding being um, positively charged, attracting the, the polythene rod on the watch glass that's negatively charged. There we go. Now you can see here, the closeness of it tells you how big the force is. So if I'm over here, it's obviously not a big enough force to cause it to rotate, but as I bring it closer, the force of attraction gets bigger and bigger, and when it's close enough, that's when it starts to move. And if I go really close without touching it, then we get an even bigger force. And um, obviously if they touched, then the charges would cancel out oh, and it wouldn't work anymore. Okay. Now, if we put that cloth back over there, take another polythene rod and I'll charge that up as well. That is going to give us a similar charge. So two negatively charged rods and what we should get is repulsion. There we go. So you can draw conclusions about similar charges repelling. Again, the closeness of the rods tells you how big the force is. So the closer I am, the bigger the force. Whereas if I hold it out here, there's the force, there is a force, but it's not big enough to make it move. So there'll be friction between the watch glass and the table. So and the closer I bring it, the oh, so it's a bit better, the bigger the force. Okay, uh, and that also works. So if I take this off now, I can let that touch the table because I'm done with that. If I do the same thing with the acetate rods, so I charge them up, put this on here, be very careful not to let the charged end over here touch the table. And I charge up another acetate rod. And there we go, repulsion.